The venomous words hung heavy in the air. Freeloader, get out! My mother-in-law's spiteful outburst, dripping with contempt, finally pushed me to the edge. I understand, I said, voice calm despite the storm within. Thank you for everything. With a feigned sadness, I packed my things. My heart, however, burned with righteous anger. They had no idea what was coming. My name is Emily, a 32-year-old remote worker. For five years, John and I had a happy marriage. But our harmony fractured when his father, once robust, fell ill. We moved in to help, naively expecting a short stay. John, an only child, had no other option. Caring for his father while managing my job was a Herculean task. Thankfully, I was allowed to work remotely. However, the real challenge came from my mother-in-law, a master manipulator disguised as a sweet old lady. Emily, how long will you slack off? She'd snap, ignoring the glow of my computer screen where I diligently toiled. Get to work! Her taunts were constant, a relentless battering ram against my sanity. I wasn't goofing off. I was clinging to my career, desperately trying to maintain my income. After months of relentless effort, I succeeded in restoring my income to pre-caregiving levels. Relieved, I thought we could finally save. But life became a financial sinkhole. My husband, John, a notorious show-off, used our credit cards to impress colleagues with extravagant lunches and parties. These weren't quick bites or casual gatherings. They were lavish affairs at trendy restaurants and expensive bars. My mother-in-law was no angel either. She indulged in a whirlwind of hobbies, her days filled with classes and social gatherings, all funded by a reckless spending spree. Between their incessant demands and their financial sabotage, I snapped. Exhausted and exploited, I confronted them. We need to cut back on spending. We're draining our savings. John's response was defensive. You want me to look cheap? My colleagues might judge me. My mother-in-law chimed in. It's just socializing with friends, Emily. Don't be a killjoy. John's work lunches involved expensive girls' bars. His flimsy excuses only fueled my anger. My mother-in-law's justifications were equally infuriating. Her socializing, it turned out, involved expensive art classes and lavish tea parties with her friends. Leaving was the only solution. As I walked away, a new plan took shape. I wouldn't disappear quietly. They underestimated me. With meticulous planning, I gathered evidence credit card statements, emails, and screenshots. I documented John's work outings and my mother-in-law's extravagant purchases. Finally armed with proof, I contacted a lawyer. Their world would soon crumble. While they enjoyed their delusions of grandeur, their financial house of cards was about to collapse. My revenge wouldn't be a dramatic blow-up. It would be cold, calculated, and entirely legal. The future was uncertain. But one thing was clear. I was free. Freedom from their abuse, freedom from their financial burdens. With my head held high, I began a new chapter, no longer a doormat, but a survivor. The journey wouldn't be easy, but I was starting over, this time on my own terms. Who do you think you are, acting high and mighty when you're just a housewife? John's sneer echoed through the room, fueled by his mother's poisonous words. Work? Don't make me laugh. My blood ran cold. They truly believed I was some lazy homemaker, oblivious to my remote work and the income I brought in. The worst part? My mother-in-law had fabricated a reality where she, not I, was the devoted caregiver to my ailing father-in-law. Leaving felt like the only escape, but my heart ached for the kind old man. Emily, he'd often say, I'm so grateful for you. You shouldn't have to deal with this. It's no trouble, father, I'd reply, meaning it with every fiber of my being. He understood my sacrifices, something John and his mother clearly didn't. Every time he needed assistance, a genuine thank you warmed my heart more than any praise. Caring for him wasn't a chore, it was a privilege. The thought of him alone fueled my resolve. I endured their belittling, pouring every ounce of love and energy into his care. When he finally passed on, a year later, tears streamed down my face. Why are you crying so much? My mother-in-law sneered, dry-eyed. It's not like you were his actual daughter. My voice cracked. Of course I'm sad. I've been taking care of him. Her mask of indifference shattered. Taking care of him? As if I didn't take care of my own husband. In reality, 
she was a master manipulator. While I shouldered the burden of caregiving and housework, she flitted from hobby to hobby, returning only for gossip and outings. Yet, she played the victim with a tearful performance in front of relatives, turning me into the villain. Please, stop being so harsh on your mother-in-law, concerned whispers followed me. The judgment from strangers stung. I withdrew, leaving John to navigate the family drama. One day, he approached me, his face a storm. You embarrassed mom in front of everyone. Embarrassed her? I was grieving dad. My anger rose. She started it with her snide comments. She says you made her look bad, like she didn't do anything for him. I never said that. I just spoke the truth. How much I missed him. How I took care of him. John's voice hardened. Then maybe you shouldn't have made it sound like she did nothing. Is her pride more important than the truth? I snapped. And where were you all this time? Don't you feel any responsibility? I had work. You were the housewife. That's your job. The hypocrisy choked me. I work too, John. This is unfair. The argument was cut short by panicked relatives. We didn't speak for the rest of the day, but the silence wasn't just between us. It was the sound of a crumbling foundation. With the funeral behind us, a lawyer arrived to discuss the inheritance. The lawyer's words hung heavy in the air. The remaining money will be split evenly between his wife and his daughter-in-law, Emily. My mother-in-law's face contorted in disbelief. What? Emily? Why? Your husband expressed his gratitude to Emily for her dedicated care, the lawyer explained. She receives a portion of the inheritance as a token of that appreciation. The injustice of it all boiled within her. Gratitude? That woman was just after the money. All that caregiving. A big fat act. John, clearly uncomfortable, mumbled, But I thought Mom took care of Dad. Exactly. My mother-in-law shot a triumphant glance at me. Why would she need a share if I was doing everything? My stomach churned. That's where you're wrong, I said, my voice surprisingly calm. I've cared for him since he fell ill. Don't lie she shrieked. You were always too busy working from home to lift a finger. But the truth had its champions. The lawyer continued. According to your father-in-law's note, Emily was relieved of her caregiving duties upon his passing. My mother-in-law's smile faltered. Relieved? That means she wasn't needed anymore. A slow realization dawned on John's face. So the inheritance, it wasn't gratitude? Precisely, she crowed, misunderstanding completely. He wanted her out of the house. Severance pay, nothing more. Perfect. The facade my father-in-law and I had carefully constructed was holding beautifully. He and I had a secret pact. He'd use his will to reward me, allowing me a graceful exit strategy. My mother-in-law's suspicions were exactly what we needed. Oh, father, I feigned sadness. Why would you do such a thing? Her eyes narrowed. See, John? Even he didn't see you as a daughter-in-law. She turned to me, venom dripping from her lips. You're not needed anymore. John divorced her already. My mother-in-law played right into our hands, oblivious to the fact that I craved nothing more than to get away from her. John considered it for a moment. Divorce. Yeah, that seems best, he finally said. Now I have the house, Mom has the money, no more caregiving duties. No need for Emily anymore. His words felt like a twisted liberation. I see, I said, wiping away staged tears. Later, alone with the lawyer, I revealed my final play. No need for property division. My inheritance is enough. My mother-in-law beamed. How considerate. Indeed, I replied, the sarcasm hidden in my smile. Packing was quick. As I left, my mother-in-law's triumphant grin sent shivers down my spine. Little did she know, the inheritance would be the least of their problems. Leaving the in-law house felt like shedding a suffocating cloak. Outside, I held back a triumphant shout. I was free. Reaching my pre-rented apartment, I threw my belongings down and finally let out a roar. No more manipulation, no more accusations, just glorious, glorious freedom. The phone call came a year after my escape. My ex-husband, John's voice crackled with desperation. Emily, please help us. We're in a financial bind. A sardonic laugh bubbled up. Really? You need help after kicking me out? 
We're not making ends meet with our salaries, John stammered. We can't live like this. Oh, dear, I purred, savoring the irony. Isn't this a familiar refrain? John spluttered. What do you mean? Let's play catch up, shall we? I dropped the bomb. My salary isn't flowing into your household coffers anymore. Silence stretched, thick and uncomfortable. What? Your salary? Remember that work-from-home gig you ridiculed? It pays handsomely. The truth hit him like a freight train. We couldn't afford our lifestyle on just your salary. Indeed. All that splurging with your mother, you never noticed our savings dwindling? It wasn't deliberate. We both earned well enough, he protested. Well enough for your lavish vacations and bottomless shopping sprees? You and your mother at your ages, it's ludicrous. A pained gasp escaped him. So, how much were you making, Emily? Around $4,800 a month. A smug smile played on my lips. And now, without your dead weight, it's even higher. The news rocked him. Emily, can we, can we work things out? Start over? The audacity. Don't be ridiculous. You just want access to my income again. No, it's not that. I realize I still love you. Empty words. Save it, John. What about your mother's inheritance? Surely that's a comfortable cushion. Nearly gone, he admitted sheepishly. Trips, shopping, and a few unfortunate nights at the casino. Hopeless. Utterly hopeless. I have no interest in helping you dig yourselves out of the mess you created. Click. The dial tone droned in my ear, a symphony compared to their whining voices. I immediately blacklisted his number. Months later, driving past their old house, a gaping hole in its place sent a shiver down my spine. Karma, it seemed, served cold justice. My life, meanwhile, was a blossoming rose. Free from the shackles of resentment, I focused on my career and finally enrolled in that wine class I'd always craved. There, I met Daniel, a kind, successful man two years my senior. We connected instantly, and a year and a half later, we were married. He respects my career, cherishes my independence, and shares a love for good food and wine. Perhaps my escape wasn't just freedom. It was a path to true happiness. And maybe, just maybe, my father-in-law, in his quiet wisdom, orchestrated this new chapter with his carefully worded will. A bittersweet thought, but a happy one nonetheless. As I sipped my evening wine with Daniel by my side, I raised my glass in silent gratitude to the past and an even brighter future.